Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. For the full problem and the solution transcript, feel free to check out this video, the description of this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week is really cool. It's about the gamma function. Uh, originally I was only going to give you part B and that was going to be a problem of the week. I decided the gamma function deserved an advanced knowledge problem of the week, so I tacked on part A and we're going to do both of them today. I'm really excited. No need to think of factorials as just uh, very limited things to only like integers and stuff, so this is really cool for me. Um, okay, so we're going to start by looking at um, what we know so far. And at, when I first saw this, I was really confused. How are you going to get from 1 to 2 or 2 to 1? Well, first of all, it's much easier to go from 1 to 2 than 2 to 1. Uh, and you can do this, and the key hint is with this limit as n goes to infinity. Well, the definition of e has a limit of n as n goes to infinity, so that's a really good first step. I'm going to turn that e into... Um, what it's equal to in terms of its definition. All right, and so this is what it's going to turn into if you just plug that in. Uh, I'm going to do a change of variables. I'm going to use x is equal to t divided by n instead. Uh, first step, look at the boundaries. So at 0, um, or t is equal to 0, apologies. x is also going to be equal to 0 because if t is 0, even if n goes to infinity, well, especially if n goes to infinity, it's going to be equal to 0. Um, t is equal to infinity. x is going to go equal to 1 because we're taking limit as n goes to infinity. I'm going to plug this back in. Actually, for now, I'll drop the limit as n goes to infinity. Uh, just know that it's there and that I will be putting it back in at the end. So I've put that back in. I've uh, made all the necessary substitutions that had to happen. Uh, I'm going to pull out n to the power of z from this because we have n to the power of z minus 1 and n to the power of 1. <laughs> Apologies for the typo. I've changed that to the 1 like it should be. Um, so from here, we have this. And the cool thing we do now is we do integration by parts. Um, so I'll do 1, and then it'll be very clear what the pattern is and what that's going to turn into. Okay, so I've set u equal to 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1, uh, to the power of n, and then, so I've done du, uh, du, and also dv is equal to x to the power of z minus n, therefore this is uh, v. So I'm going to do the integration by parts, just um, uv minus integral of v du. Uh, and we do need to evaluate uv at the boundaries, so I'm just going to write that down. Uh, and here's what you get, and this is kind of where the magic starts to happen. Well, we pulled out a coefficient n and z from the integral. I say pulled out in quotes. But uh, if you look at this, you can see that if x is equal to 0, um, x to the power of z, that has to equal 0. So that's going to equal 0 there. But if x is equal to 1, then 1 minus x is going to be equal to 0. So this term just drops out. And if you are willing to accept that, then if you understand that if you repeat this process over and over again, this 1 minus x to the power of n minus 1, that's just going to keep going down and down and down until you do it n times, n minus 1 times at this point. Um, and you're going to keep pulling out coefficients over here, and you're going to keep getting vanishing terms like this. So if you just say, you repeat this, integration by parts, a bunch of times. I'm going to put the limit as n goes to infinity back. You'll eventually get this. Uh, very easy integral to evaluate. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Um, that is going to pull out. Uh, x to the power of z plus, one, z plus n divided by z plus n. Evaluate at 0 is equal to 0. Evaluate at 1. Um, you get uh, 1 divided by z plus n. And that's where you're going to get the final z plus n term, proving that this entire thing That 
finishes up the proof, and we have proven that 1 is equal to 2. And I thought that was really cool. Um, and this works for valid Z, which are many, many numbers, infinite actually. So now I'll move on to part B. Okay, so I'm going to write part B on the board. It looks kind of crazy, but then you realize that it actually only takes two logical steps, really, to get from uh, point A to point B. And point A, I'll just show that this is equal to that. Uh, we're going to do that by, show, by putting this into the form of 1 up there. And by doing that, we're going to prove that it is equal to the gamma function of 9 eighths. So first step. Uh, I'm going to do a substitution. Um, t is going to be equal to um, x to the power of 8. I'm going to realize that dt is equal to 8x to the power of 7 uh, dx. However, 8 times t to the power of 7 eighths is also equal to 8x to the power of 7. And that's what we need for this part. I'm going to substitute that back in. Uh, and we get this, and we're very close to the answer. We're not quite there yet. I'm going to integrate by parts, and then you'll see the answer come up. All right, so I've set u equal to e to the negative t. I've set dv equal to t to the power of negative 7 eighths dt. So if I plug that into integration by parts, uv minus uh, integral v du. Uh, so here I have plugged it back in, and I also rewrote that over there for you. Um, and from here, you can see that this is going to equal 0. This is because when it, t is equal to 0, t to the power of 1 eighth has to be 0. And when t is equal to infinity, this term, e to the power of negative t, that is also going to equal 0. So this term just vanishes. Uh, we have an 1 eighth and an eighth. Those are going to turn into 1. Um, and then from there, uh, that perfectly matches this definition of the gamma function if z is equal to 9 over 8. So, this right here is equal to the gamma function of 9 eighths, and therefore we've proven that this, which looks crazy and hard to evaluate, is equal to gamma function of 9 over 8. So that's it for this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to see more Problems of the Week, Advanced Knowledge Problems of the Week, feel free to click up here for the playlist. Uh, if you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click right there. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, feel free to click there. If you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner over there. And it should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching.